Parshas Emor, Tokshin Pei Beis. Want to welcome everybody. Nice crowd here tonight, Baruch Hashem. I'm sure it has to do with the expecting uh, a good cheer and nothing to do with the uh, 18 course Shmorg Toyamel that's going on here tonight. But uh, Baruch Hashem, it's always a great matzah here, and we very much appreciate everyone here in Bikul Cholim for hosting this year. And last week, we spoke about Shabbos Kodesh. We spoke a little bit about the Indian of Shabbos. And as I was looking through the Nesiva Sholem on this week's Parsha, I saw that the Nesiva Sholem continues to speak in one of the pieces this week, but a little on a much deeper scale, discussing a little further into the Indian of Shabbos. So everybody keep your deep thinking caps on. We're going to speak a little bit, a little bit uh, deeper than we usually speak into the Siva Shalom. It's just interesting, I'll let you know, Siva Shalom has many different types of pieces. Some are very mystical, some are very deep, others are a little different, but uh, this is one a little bit off the, the beaten path. And during the course, during the second uh, half of the Pasha, during the course of speaking about the different Yom and Toivim, the Torah we find, we find, uses a Loshoin of Shabbat Shabbosoin. When we speak about Shabbos, the Torah first starts, says that we're going to talk about the Yom and Toivim, and then the Torah mentions Shabbos, and when we refer to Shabbos, we don't just call it Shabbos, we call it Shabbos, Shabbosoy. Just an interesting way of refer, referring to Shabbos. You look a little bit further into the Parsha, the Torah uses the same Loshoin of Shabbat Shabbosoy when we mention Yom HaKippurim. The Torah first speaks about Pesach, Sfira, Shabbos, Rosh Hashanah, and then we speak about Yom HaKippurim, and when we speak about Yom HaKippurim, the Torah also refers to Yom Kippur as Shabbos, Shabbos Very interesting. But you look also at next week. Next week, at the beginning of the Parsha, we learn about something which is actually taking place this year, and that is the Indian of Shemitah. And when we talk about Shemitah in Parshas Bahar, the Torah once again uses a Loshoin and says, what is Shemitah? Shabbat Shabbosoin Yihiel Oretz. It's also called Shabbat Shabbosoin. Fascinating to see why the Torah all of a sudden starts using this Loshoin of not just Shabbos, but by Shabbos, Yom Kippur and Shemitah we call it Shabbos, Shabbosoin. So why specifically in these three instances, in these three cases, does the Torah do so? The Eben Ezra, in Parshas Achrei Mois, tells us that the term Shabbos, Shabbosoin, you know what it means? When we say Shabbos, it means a day of rest. Shabbos means to rest. Shabbos, Shabbosoin means, says the Eben Ezra, it means Shavisa Shvita, a rest, that is a great rest. Obviously we have to explain what that is, but he's telling us it doesn't just mean that it's a regular rest, where you, you eat your bowl of Cholam to Kishka, take a nap, that's a rest. You don't do Malacha, that's a rest. It's the, uh, it's a, the rest of all rests, and one where there's actually no greater rest, where your entire being is at rest. So again, we have to answer why in these three places. Also, we need to take note of the differences of how the Torah uses this Lashon. And this I found to be really fascinating. By Parshas Vayakel, the Torah, when referring to Shabbos, the Torah says, Shabbos Shabbosoin, but to who? Shabbos Shabbosoin, Lashem. That Shabbos is referred to Shabbos Shabbosoin, but it says it's Shabbat Shabbosoin for who? To Hashem. By Yom Kippur, in Parshas Achrei Mois, and in our Parsha this week, the Torah says 
Shabbos, Shabbosoin, he lochem. For you, it's a Shabbos, Shabbosoin. Shabbos is Shabbos Lashem. Yom Kippur, Shabbos, Shabbosoin, he lochem. It's for you. And by Shemitah, it's totally different. By Shemitah, when you can't work the land, the Torah says, Shabbat Shabbosoin, what? Shabbat Shabbosoin, yihyeh l'oretz. That it's not a rest for you, and not, it doesn't mention that it's a rest for Hashem, it's a Shabbat Shabbosoin for the land. So the Siva Shalom says, that when we say that Shabbat Shabbosoi means a great rest, we need to understand that Shvita actually means the lack of doing anything. That's what Shvita means. Shabbos means that you stop doing things. The absence of work, that's simple Shabbos. But when we say Shabbat Shabbosoi, it's much deeper than that. It's not just the absence of doing work. Shabbat Shabbosoin means that we're getting into the neshama of the matter. And see, the Shalom tells us, and this is just a little bit of a deep thought, that when Hashem created the world, and not just into people, there is the essence of everything that was created. There's everything in this world, and every situation, everything has a neshama. And the neshama of the Bria, the neshama of the creation, the neshama of the world is Shabbos Kodesh. The neshama of the year, when we speak about a whole year, a neshama of time, is Yom Kippur. And the neshama of the land of Eretz Yisrael is Shemitah. Shemitah gives the Kedusha to the land. And with this preface, we can explain the differences in how the Torah mentions Shabbat Shabbosoin by these three things. Let's start with Shabbos. Shabbos is called Shabbat Shabbosoin Lashem. You know why Shabbos is Shabbat Shabbosoin Lashem? Because Shabbos is more than just the rest that we do here in Olam Hazed. When Shabbos comes, and we touched upon this last week, we need to keep in mind that the entire universe is different. Not just the surface things that we see here in Olam Hazet, the things that we see here on Earth, the entire universe changes. As we say in Kegavna, that all Luchal Shultane, Mara, Bedina, everything, all evil forces of the world, Isabamina, they all leave the world and they're forced to flee and remove themselves from this world. So, so too, all the brachas that exist and take place in this world, they all stem from Shabbos. The neshama that breathes life into the world and the neshama that breathes life into every bracha that we get in our lives, that is the Shabbos Kodesh. So when we say Shabbat Shabbat when the Torah mentions Shabbat Shabbat by Shabbos, we say Shabbat Shabbat Lashem. Not just for us and the things that we see here on this earth. It's not just Shabbos for that. It's Shabbat Shabbat Lashem, that it's for all the Olamas and all the galaxies and everything in the universe. Just understand that Shabbos has an effect on every single thing that we could picture in our mind, everything that we see, everything that we don't see, every bracha that we want in our lives, it's all taking place, it all gets elevated and turns totally different when Shabbos comes. And that's Shabbat Shabbosoi, Lashem. And when Yom Kippur comes, Yom Kippur is different. Yom Kippur, we said, is called Shabbat Shabbosoi, Lochem. It's for you. And you know why Yom Kippur is for you? The Torah specifically tells us that Yom Kippur is for you. The Sefer HaChinuch speaks at length about the fact that Yom Kippur was established from the beginning of creation. Unlike the other mitzvahs, 
and the Mayadim, like we see in our Parsha this week, the other mitzvahs and the Mayadim, they began at Kabbalah Satoira. Yom Kippur was created at the creation and outset of the world. And it's one of the greatest chasodim that Hashem does with us. And Hashem did us this chesed from the first moment that He created the world, and He made a Yom Kippur, and He made Yom Kippur that the world should be able to continue, and that we don't accumulate an unsustainable about, uh, amount of Averroes. Yom Kippur was created before, ma before man got started in this world, because Hashem did us a chesed to make sure that every single year we can have unload the burden, that we can unload Averroes that have been accumulated. And this is the one day, we have this one day of Yom Kippur where we cleanse ourselves and we purify, purify ourselves. So comes the Torah and says, it's a great chesed that Hashem did for us. And we refer to it as Shabbos, Shabbosoin Lochem. It's for you, a great chesed. Hashem did it with the creation, a great chesed known as Yom Kippur. And this is the neshama that keeps the whole year going. It's because of Yom Kippur that we're able to continue when we get mechila for our averes, we're able to continue and go on. It's the neshama of the year. And that began from Tchilas Habria. And then, lastly, we have Shemitah. Shemitah, as we said, the Torah says, is Shabbat Shabbosoy La'aretz. That Hashem put a special Kedusha into this gift that is called Eretz Yisrael. This gift that Hashem gave us is called Eretz Yisrael. Rabbi Yehuda HaLevi, in the Sefer Kuzari, he tells us that a Yid can really only reach their full potential in Eretz Yisrael. And he says, you know why? If somebody, we've mentioned this a couple of times, if somebody tries to plant a vineyard, plant a vineyard in your backyard, try to plant it over here, it's not going to, you may grow a couple of grapes, but it's not going to be the kind of grapes or for a fine wine from the best grapes in the world. There are certain places in the world, there are some places, go into Eretz Yisrael, in the Golan, you go to certain places, whether it's in, in France or in California, there are certain lands that are, uh, that are made special and perfect for the cultivating of grapes, and it's in that place that they're going to thrive the most. Says the Sefer Kuzari, of Yehuda Levi and Sefer Kuzari, that that's a Jew in Eretz Yisrael. A Jew in Eretz Yisrael, you can do mitzvahs and chutzl Eretz. You can learn, you can do chesed, you can do everything. But if you really want to thrive, you want to reach your full potential, you're like a grape that has to be in the finest vineyards a grape that has to be planted in the finest lands. And for a Jew, your vineyard, your place is in Eretz Yisrael. And it is Shemitah that instills that Kedusha in the land of Eretz Yisrael. That's the Neshama of Eretz Yisrael. And come Shemitah, and we say, Shabbat Shabbat Yihyeh La'oretz. We're telling you now that what gives Eretz Yisrael that Kedusha what gives Eretz Yisrael that special power? That is the Shemitah when we keep Shemitah. So now we understand what it means, Shabbat Shabbosoyim Lashem for Shabbos. Then we say, Shabbat Shabbosoyim Lochem for you, the favor of Yom Kippurim. And then, Shabbat Shabbosoyim Yihyeh Oretz. That each part in time, in the week, in the Eretz, in, in land, Everything has that special neshama, that special Shabbos that's breathed into it. Now you have a little bit deeper thought of what Shabbos exactly is. Let's appreciate what we have in the Shabbos. And we'll also appreciate and think about what we have in Yom Kippurim. And we'll also appreciate what Eretz Yisrael is to every one of us. It is the neshama. It is the most significant part of every year, the place where we can thrive.